as Rod said, this is uh, a very much a last minute preparation, but I do think it's important, particularly following on from um, the discussion earlier on and Senator Evans you know, telling us about all of the investment that the government's making in development of skills, that we um, just give you a bit of background on, which many of you are probably already aware of, the more recent initiatives in relation to Skills Connect. And um, basically it's about right down to the brass tacks. We're not, this is not a strategy, this is really the funding that's available at the moment through government programs to be invested in skills, but not um, randomly, it's, it's done through a very much a workforce development approach. It's the sort of approach that's been um, building over the last few years, starting off with the Enterprise-Based Productivity Places Program, which has been very positively evaluated and has led to the Workforce Development Program. As I, uh, <clears throat> it's basically the skills councils have been put in charge of administering and brokering the, the enterprise-based productivity program and the success in that has led to us being the brokers for the National Workforce Development Fund. Which, as you'd be aware, at the moment there is $25 million invested in aged care as a priority for 2011 and 2012. And there's also another one to two million for um, community services and health in other sectors. This is funding for enterprises and professional associations, industry bodies and employment services providers. In previous uh, funding rounds under the EB Triple P, there wasn't the option of funding for employment services providers. It's actually a very um, important avenue because it starts to open up the capacity for bringing new entrants into the workforce. And th one of the features of the program is that there is an employer contribution and it's a higher level of employer contribution than was funded under the EB Triple P. So those of you who've put in applications will be aware that large organisations, that is who employ over 200 people, will be paying 66% of contribution. Medium organisations, which is between 100 and 200, are paying 50%. And small organisations um, have to pay the 33%. This has been difficult for many organisations in our sector, but there's still been a large number of applications. There's also some work going on outside the guidelines of the Workforce Development Fund in aged care, which has been driven through peak organisations, which allows us to invest strategically in the development, in workforce development for the aged care sector. Um, on the 21st of September, the government announced the Skills Connect program. It's basically responding to changing economic conditions by focusing skills programs, that is a large suite of them, which we'll come to in a second, to support industry, to big, build workforce resilience and flexibility, and to better support the transition of displaced workers. In, in a sense, it was one of its early um, initiatives is in relation to the Blue Scope um, steel closures and how do you actually bring to bear on particular locations and on particular industry sectors the right sorts of funding to help grow, um, grow employment and skills in those particular areas. This is the money that's been pulled together under the Skills Connect program um, for 2011 and 12. There's 50 million through the National Workforce Development Fund, which includes the, um, has had rolled into it, pr the Critical Skills Investment Fund. 
the programs in critical skills that are on the board at the moment do not change. This is the funding that was going to go through um, future critical skills investment fund, has now been rolled into the workforce development fund. Um, the, it's now a rolling fund and so there's no um, deadlines. You can apply for funding any time under the workforce development fund. The aged care and other priority sectors that were nominated in the earlier round of Workforce Development Fund, they are still in play, is the phrase used, and also the co-contribution the co remains the same. Another um, amount of money has been, 29 million has been um, set to be distributed through the Accelerated Apprenticeships Program, and it can allow focus for apprenticeships in structurally adjusted industries, which there are many in our, um, in our area. Not only are we, as we've heard and we know, the fastest growing and the employing more people than any other industry sector, there's also a lot of um, change going on through, as we've heard this morning, lots of productivity commission reports driving change in it, it, through aged care, children's services, disability, and in a sense, it's structural adjustment. So apprenticeship programs can be tailored to that. Accelerated apprenticeships, um, for us, it's not so much an issue of acceleration as ensuring the quality of the training that's delivered. And there was discussion about that this morning and will be a lot more. $15 million through an apprenticeship mentoring program, which will support apprentices in their, in, throughout their training to contribute to the quality of their training and to keeping them um, in so that they actually complete their qualifications. There's additional money under the Workplace English Language and Literacy Program and there is some specifically targeted to aged care in that program. And it all, this uh, Skills Connect also allows access to the Experience Plus and More Help for Mature Aged Workers initiatives. Uh, oh. yeah, the formation of the National Workforce Development Agency has been brought forward and there are three new members of the board. And the, this board will address the complementary objectives of funding training for Australian workforce to meet the skills demands of booming industries and provide practical targeted training to those workers directly affected by restructuring. Well, we are the largest employer group and we're growing fast and as I say, there's also a lot of um, change going on in the sector. So there, I think there is a lot of scope for this industry to make use of the Skills Connect program. And the, the, the new work, Workforce Development Agency board will make recommendations on where the funding should go. <coughs> Skills Connect is not actually a single program. It's more of a gateway into the programs that I listed above. There's no change to the assessment and approval process that's already in place under the National Workforce Development Fund. So skills councils facilitate the applications and participate with um, DWA as part of the application assessment panel. But as I said, these are going to be rolling assessments. The skills councils are lead intermediary, intermediary agencies for the fund and will have a lot to do with working also, not only with the national offices of DWA, but also with the state, state offices to make sure that worthwhile projects are put together and that they are implemented. So it's quite, quite a challenge for the skills councils and there is a very short time frame during which this funding is available. There's going to be a single application process and um, and a form, a single form. So when, the, when applicants from an industry or a sector or a region are putting in a proposal, they will only have one form to fill in. The complexity it lies behind it, which will be sorted through by DWA and others who are involved in implementing the program.
so I, I'm ba basically we're wanting to make sure that everyone's aware of these funding opportunities and that we can work together with you to pull together approaches and worthwhile projects targeting sectors and regions in areas such as, well, there's further scope for aged care, also for children's services, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health, disability and mental health. So it's just to give you a bit of background on um, what's on offer at the moment under the Skills Connect program and looking forward to working with you to get some very worthwhile applications up and we'll all learn together how we make it work. But it all has to happen before the 30th of June next year.